Hi, I'm Nick Carroll and this is the special Surf Safety Series just for you, brought to you by Surf Life Saving New South Wales and Coastal Watch. Welcome to number three in our Surf Safety Series. This one's about the first moves in a crisis. So you're in the water, something happens, someone gets knocked out by the surfboard, someone gets badly injured somehow, God forbid they're attacked by a shark. What do you do? What are your priorities? So in this episode we'll just look at the danger of the situation, your first response, what you should do immediately, what you should do as a follow-up, and we'll prepare you for the next couple of episodes where we'll talk right through rescuing people with a surfboard and the CPR process. A big set comes through, you know, you come up and there's one less guy in the lineup, one less person there, but their board's there, something messed up's happened. So what do you do? What's your first move? First thing to do, have a look around, have a really good look around, okay? While you're waiting for that person to resurface, just spend the next five or ten seconds looking around. What else is there? What else is going on? What you're doing is looking for danger to yourself because let's face it, if something really goes wrong to you, you're no good as a sort of rescue person, right? Uh, and also danger to maybe the person in trouble and maybe the other people around you. So just have a look around and just take your time with that. Don't rush it. You've all heard the stories about the mum or dad whose kid gets stuck in a rip and mum or dad runs in after that little kid and the little kid gets out of the rip fine and the mum or the dad drowns. Don't be that mum or dad. Don't even be that brother or sister. Get a response from the person. Like, they come up, they're conscious, whatever, or half conscious, just groggy or whatever. Talk to them. Uh, get a sense of what has happened to them and also give them a sense that you're there to help them. Uh, it's that confidence in you that's going to get them through this situation. Get their name, have they got friends or family on the beach, uh, do they hurt anywhere in particular, uh, are they feeling confident themselves, uh, can they get their board, what can they do, what can you do. Okay, next priority is to get the person to the beach. There's almost literally nothing you can do for that person until they're back on the beach. Uh, anything you might want to do to stop the bleeding, for instance, you can't do that in the water. You can't perform CPR in a surf zone, it's literally impossible. And the longer you're all in the surf zone together, the more likely it is that you're going to lose that poor person under a broken wave and they might just disappear and never see them again. Get help in doing this. There's probably other people in the water. If there is, great, ask them for help. But don't like, slow the process down too much while you're doing that. On the beach, call triple O, emergency number. There is a worldwide emergency number that hooks up with any emergency service wherever you are in the world. It is 112. That'll work in Indonesia, Tahiti, Australia, anywhere. Okay, 112. That's a number to remember for when you're on holiday and you're traveling somewhere. On the beach, get control of the situation. People kind of like weird about situations like this they'll come around to like stare and you know like they they kind of are attracted to things you probably notice this on the road when there's been an accident the traffic slows right down because everyone wants to perv on the accident so just get control of that situation and just make sure that the person has plenty of room around them and is able to sit up and relax if that's what they need or maybe you're gonna have to do some CPR in which case you really don't want people spectating too closely if you know CPR and someone else knows CPR, CPR gets easier. It's really hard to do proper compressions in that process. Uh, after more than about five or 10 minutes, you'll get exhausted. So the more people you can pull in to help you, the better. Defer to skills. That may seem obvious, but not, it isn't always. If a lifeguard shows up with a defib and some oxygen, maybe they'll want you to keep doing some work on the person while they get ready, but do what they say, okay? Just listen to them. Tell them what's going on, but listen to them. Be 
but don't just bail. You know, that lifeguard or paramedic might want you around for whatever reason, so just hang out. Same thing goes if the person's okay, they seem okay when they get back to the beach, don't just bugger off. Help them contact family or friends to come and pick them up from the beach or wherever you happen to be. And just keep an eye on them because people have really strange reactions after being in danger in the surf. Sometimes they'll have swallowed water and not known it. There may even be water in the lungs. Uh, they might have a bad reaction to that. So just stick around and make sure they're on their way to safety before you leave the scene. Summary, first moves in the water, have a look around, make sure there's no danger, get a response from the person in trouble, get them back to the beach because you can't do a damn thing for them in the water, get some help doing it, but don't let it slow you down too much. On the beach, call triple O, not 911. If you're in another country, call 112, that's the global emergency number. Get control of the situation, more helping hands than merrier, and don't just bugger off and leave the person there because you never know what might happen next.